Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Nick Tan Chats. My name is Nick Tan and on today's episode, I'll be chatting with you about Ethereal by Louis Laval over at Minehouse. So hi again guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for showing up, thanks for tuning in and thanks for spending some time with me today. So on today's episode, I'll be uh, chatting with you about something from Louis Laval. This is something that he calls ethereal, okay? So some time ago, Louis uh, shared with me that he was you know, going to be putting together uh, a project, a video download project, uh, discussing his ideas on the PK Touch. Uh, effect, all right. PK touches uh, the psychokinetic touches effect um, that was published uh, by Banachek, you know, in a little booklet um, sometime in 1994. So if you're not familiar with this effect, uh, well, usually you would have two spectators uh, on stage and you would have uh, both of them close their eyes, okay, and then from here you would openly tap one of the spectators, okay, uh, on, the, on the shoulder, on the, on the hand, on the arm perhaps, uh, and then the other spectator who has their eyes closed still uh, will also verify that they too can feel the touches. So PK touches is an incredible effect, all right? It's really strong and I fell in love with it um, from the very first time I, I got to know of it and when I learned the, the concept, right? And it's always been, uh, for the most part, uh, a regular uh, piece uh, in my stage performances. I've gone through a couple of versions out there, uh, learned a couple of routines, but eventually I settled on a, a choreography that I felt suited me best. So what I really love about PK Touches is that, well, number one, it plays really strongly. You know, audiences just, you know, just are really taken aback by the effect. And secondly, it's not really magic and it's not really mentalism as well, right? So I've always found it to be a really nice kind of a center piece to, you know, kind of add texture to, you know, my mind reading show. So the thing about PK Touches is that, um, well, the concept right behind the method is it's really simple. You know, and in fact, when you first learn it, you know, you're gonna think there's, there's no way I'm gonna get away with it, right? And then there's always that fear of when you are performing the effect. You know, in fact, the first time you actually try to perform the effect, you will still get really nervous, right? And even until today, actually, you know, there's always that, that moment, right? For those of you who perform PK touches, you will know this moment when, you know, when you're waiting for the spectator, the participant, to respond to that first touch, all right? So, I mean, for example, so if you felt me touch you anywhere on the arm at all, I'd like you to use your right index finger and point to the spot where you felt me tap you. Right, there's always that moment, you know, when you're unsure whether the participant understood and, uh, you know, you really wonder whether the effect would, would be able to continue or not, right? Uh, I've had a couple of times on stage where the effect has failed, you know, for, for one reason or another. Well, there are a couple of outs I do use, you know, uh, I would tend to uh, re-attempt the effect just once. And if that still fails, uh, what I tend to do uh, is I dismiss one of the participants, usually the, you know, the participant who didn't respond, and then I would perform uh, D'Angelo's touch with the remaining spectator on stage. Okay, so I kind of get myself out of that situation um, you know, that way. But I think you know, with experience you know, and with the right amount of um, you know, how blatant you are, once you find that balance, you, know, you should have no problems in performing this really, really strong effect. So I'm sure most of you who perform PK touches will be really interested to find out about Ethereal, all right? Because the trailer looked incredible, right? It really looked amazing, didn't it? I mean, Lewis is just like tapping his palm like that and the participant can kind of verbalize that he is feeling the touches. So that was the routine that really got me interested in, in checking out this video, you know? And um, when Lewis sent me the files, I really couldn't wait to get started, you know, on learning this. So let's talk about Ethereal. Uh, what do you get when you purchase Ethereal from Minehouse? Uh, you'll be given access to uh, a couple of tutorial videos. Uh, in the videos themselves, uh, Lewis will give you an introduction to the effect. He will also give you a rundown about what he'll be covering on this project. There will be four items that are taught on this project. Uh, one is called Replicant. Uh, the second one is called Replicant Reveal. The third is something called Cuckoo Clan. And then uh, for the fourth one is called Palm Chakra. And then there'll be some closing thoughts at the end of the video as well to wrap up the project. 
So I think this will be a slightly, um, you know, a rather ambiguous kind of a review, you know, because I can't really describe exactly what happens, all right, during these uh, routines, right, that Louis uh, shares with you on this project, because, well, part of the, the, the secret, right, part of the method is in fact um, the staging of, of certain things. But I will try my best uh, to describe to you in detail as to what uh, kind of happens in each of these uh, items that are discussed on the project uh, and I hope that uh, that will give you enough information as to whether this is something that you'd like to pick up or not. So first of all, let's talk about uh, Replicant, okay, uh, the first routine on the project and this would be the routine that you would have seen uh, in the trailer itself, all right, where Lewis is just kind of touching his own palm uh, and then the participant, all right, with his eyes closed, uh, can kind of count out loud uh, when he feels the touches, all right, so it's kind of like a real-time PK touch effect. So this is actually based on something that um, another well-known mentalist, okay, uh, has published uh, before, okay, and I won't mention the, the name exactly because I don't want to give away, you know, exactly what's happening in, in Replicant, right? But uh, in essence, the effect is, you know, you have the spectator close their eyes, they hold out their, their arm, uh, and then you openly tap your own, okay, your own hand, and they will, you know, verify that they, they do feel, all right, uh, the touches. And then from here, uh, obviously the highlight of the routine is where, you know, you have them count out loud the touches, right? And then you go like that and they go one, two, three, and so on and so forth, right? So that sequence, uh, I found it to be really beautiful, right? It looks great. So as I mentioned, this kind of uses, well, part of something that was published uh, before, right, by another uh, performer. And well, I haven't read that manuscript for some time, okay? So I, I don't really remember the, the exact details, but I've got a feeling that uh, the way Lewis kind of uh, cleans up the, the routine at the end is, is nicer. I think, okay, because, well, there is some, shall we say, reconciliation, okay, that needs to be done for the participant on stage with you, okay, in order for the effect to make sense to him, and I think uh, Lewis does that really well. So again, it's really difficult for me to kind of describe exactly what happens in the routine, you know, a beat by beat description, but, well, it is a, a mechanical method, okay, no electronics, a mechanical method, and the spectator will feel the taps okay, or the touches um, that you do. In fact, that really impressive sequence where you tap your own hand and the participant can verbally call out the numbers, right, uh, can be done with two spectators, okay? So you could have the spectator here close their eyes, you openly tap the palm of another spectator and they will also verbally, you know, call out one, two, three, four. The next item on this project is a related, um, you know, effect, I suppose, because, well, uh, it's called Replicant Reveal, okay? And what happens in this is, well, there is a beautiful uh, opening sequence, all right, where the spectator closes their eyes and you make a gesture like that, and they will just slowly raise their arm up, all right? So that's a, it's a really lovely uh, picture, you know? And then from there, you can go into the, you know, the invisible touches part of the effect. And again, the same thing as with Replicant, um, you can do the, you know, the open touch on your palm and they will again uh, verbalize, right, the number of touches that they feel, okay? But the difference in Replicant Reveal is that Lewis teaches you how to use this PK touch sequence to reveal um, information. Okay, so what you don't see uh, after this is that, um, you know, you'd go through all this whole process and you have kind of established a connection with the participant. They are then, you know, asked uh, to open your eyes and to imagine themselves holding uh, a small object in their hand. All right, and from there, Lewis will kind of describe the invisible object before picking it up and then telling them what the object is. Because there is a piece of information that you will need to reveal, obviously you will need to get the information first, okay? And um, well, um, yeah, that's all I'll say about it, okay? He doesn't teach you um, how to, to get info, okay? But you can just use any of your favorite methods to get information and then go into um, Replicant Reveal to do the reveal. The next item that Louis discusses on this project is something called Kukul Khan, okay, and uh, it's, it's quite hard to say, Kukul Khan, all right? Uh, and in what happens in this effect is, this is 
a kind of energy-based effect. While it is based on a PK touch effect, the participant will not feel actual like, you know, taps or, or touches. Okay, this is based more on um, a kind of energy, all right, that you will have the spectator or the participant kind of uh, feel, okay? So uh, what happens is you explain to the participant that there are maybe different kinds of energies, you know, that, that, you know, that a person can kind of make you feel, right? They would hold up their palm just like that, and then you would call upon a, this kind of an energy where he calls it the falling of rain, I think. And then uh, he would bring his hand close like that, and the participant, you know, with their eyes open, they will verify that, yeah, they can, they can feel something, okay? And then the second kind of energy is uh, kind of like a wave kind of energy where you just hold your hand uh, just above their forearm like that, and again, they will verify that they can feel something, okay? now. People in the audience would think, well, you know, his eyes are open, so, you know, obviously he can see and he can, you know, kind of psycho himself into thinking that he feels something. So you take the experiment a step further, you have the participant close their eyes. You would then do either the, the rain sequence or the wave sequence, and with their eyes closed, they will be able to identify which energy it is that they are feeling. The last and final effect is something called palm chakra, okay? And in this one, um, it's similar to the Kugul Khan effect in that it's again based on um, an energy that uh, the participant will feel, okay? So uh, again, uh, as with Kugul Khan, you have this participant hold out their palm like that, and you, uh, well, bring your hand down upon theirs like that, and they will verify that, you know, yes, they can feel something. Uh, they then hold your palm up this way, you bring your hand close to theirs, and again, they can say that, yes, they do feel something. And then from here, you can do it like from a distance, and you just do this towards them, almost like Tai Chi style, all right? And again, they will verify that, yes, they can feel something, okay? So obviously, their eyes are closed, um, but they will be able to verbalize that, yes, they can feel um, an energy of some kind. All right, so those are the routines that are taught uh, on the project, okay? Now, some of them are more like, um, well, I see them more like tools, you know, uh, for you to kind of use uh, within you know the course of uh, of your show okay now i think what's important to establish is that um, for the replicant the participant will feel actual taps for the other two routines all right the kukukan routine uh, as well as the palm chakra routine it is not exactly how should i say this it's not like taps all right it's it's <laughs> It almost sounds like the presentation is the method, right? But it's true. They will feel an energy of some kind, okay? So it, it won't be like a firm physical tap, but they might feel, well, they will feel something, all right? And um, they can respond and say that, yes, they do feel something, but because it is performed with the premise of energy, what they feel can be taken to be just that, right? Energy, they kind of understand that energy is not going to be felt like, you know, like, like this, right? Uh, it's kind of, you know, it's felt, well, differently. But what all these methods have in common is that, well, um, there are no electronics, okay? You're ready to do these things anytime, um, anywhere. It's a bit of knowledge, okay? Then I think um, Mark Paul has mentioned this before, and I loved it when he said this, right? These are just pieces of knowledge that you can use, okay, um, to kind of um, add to your show. Okay, now, they will work, they are mechanical methods, okay? It does not depend on hypnosis, suggestion, you know, that kind of, of methods, right? Where you need a really responsive participant, but you will need to get the participant in the right frame of mind. Meaning, you have to have someone who is willing to work with you and be really aware and uh, responsive to whatever it is that they will feel. Because you're not gonna have this work if you have, you know, that participant that goes like, I don't feel anything, no, I don't feel it, I don't feel it, no, no, I don't. It's not gonna work with that kind of a participant, all right? So you do have to, well, first of all, kind of choose the right person and then get them in the right frame of mind, you know, that 
they are going to be experiencing something but in order for them to have that experience they need to work with you i think you know as a performer who does pk touches uh, quite regularly right in my show i found it to be an interesting watch you know uh, and i learned some uh, really interesting ideas that I'm, I'm wondering if i can add all right into the routine that i currently do you know especially the you know the tapping sequence well yeah it's gotten me thinking you know about pk touches again and i've not revisited that effect all right the current routine that i do i've not revisited it for some time um, but this has um, given me some food for thought you know that i found interesting and um, it has shown me you know other ways that you can kind of create you know a pk touch effect I want to thank uh, Louis Laval for uh, really kindly sending this over to me so that I can have a look at it, learn it, and then uh, chat about it on this show with you guys as well. If you'd like to have a look at Ethereal and pick it up for yourselves, I will leave the link for Minehouse in the description box down below. But for now guys, thanks for watching today's episode. Uh, do stay safe, take care of yourselves, have fun with your magic and your mentalism, and I will see you on the next episode of Nick Tan Chats.